I got a question from a guy named Tyler, who is a college student doing a paper on the impact of informatics on the battlefield. I also had a number of people who wrote me and asked me about this Lavender AI system that supposedly Israel is using in Gaza to run their bombing campaign. I wrote this kind of ISR software previously, and I also integrated some AI into this system. Right now, I work for the Texas Aero Med Lab, which uses AI-powered drones to deliver whole blood to wounded soldiers. So I know a little bit about this stuff. Um, if you just want to hear about the lavender stuff, you can skip to this time up here. Other than that, it's going to take about three, four minutes to get through some of the questions. So first about informatics. Informatics is about the application of information technology to solve problems in various domains. It encompasses the collection, storage, processing, uh, anal analyzation of data to support decision making and problem solving. So Tyler had a few questions about this. I figured I would answer them while I'm drinking my, my coffee here. And uh, let's get started. The first question is, in your opinion, what is one new or improved weapon system we see today because of informatic systems being implemented? And that's easy, FPV drones. Uh, I just did a video about that. If you have surveillance drones looking for Russian tanks, when they spot those Russian tanks, they can send FPV uh, drone swarms after them. FPV stands for first person view. So uh, another example might be like the M7 Spider Munition, which is something the US views as a replacement for traditional landmines. So you've seen in Ukraine, landmines are horrifying if you're a farmer. 20 years after the war, you're plowing your field and you hit a landmine and you blow up. So that's one major disadvantage of landmines. But the advantage of something like the M7 spider munition is that you have this network system of munitions. When the spider munition detects an approaching target, it'll notify the operator who could be miles away. The operator could use a sensor to look at that target. Oh, yeah, that's a bad guy. He presses a button and the spider munition launches a, essentially, I believe it's a 40 millimeter grenade at that specific target. So um, the human operator is choosing which target to service. So something like that is using informatics. It's, it's essentially a smart networked Claymore mine. And that wouldn't have been possible even just a couple of years ago um, without battlefield informatics. Next question. I've read that one key feature of the fifth gen stealth fighters, such as the F-35 and F-22, is their network integration. What ability do they have to compile data from multiple sources? What is one of the biggest advantages of the system? One of the biggest advantages of network integration is fifth gen fighters like the F-35 and F-22 give the pilot enhanced situational awareness uh, to both pilots and to commanders. So by compiling data from multiple sensors and other aircraft, these fighter pilots create this comprehensive picture of the battlefield and, and they can do it in real time. And these days, the first person to see the target is going to be most likely the first person to service that target. So this allows pilots to make informed decisions really quickly, identify and prioritize targets more effectively and maintain a tactical advantage over the adversary. When we're making decisions at machine speed and the adversary is making decisions at human speed, we can get inside their decision cycle and just ruin your day. Um, I'm sure you've heard about the OODA loop or observe, orient, uh, decide, act. If we can affect the adversary uh, while they're observing and orienting and we're just punching them, <laughs> you know, while they're trying to observe and orient, that, that is a massive, massive advantage. Next question. Has informatics played a role in weapon accuracy to your knowledge, such as artillery or counter artillery? Yes. I worked on a, an integration of a system called UTAMS, or Unattended Transient Acoustic Massant Sensor. The idea is that you have these acoustic sensors around your base. And when Daddy El Baddy decides to mortar the base, the acoustic sensors actually hear that mortar round hitting the tube. Thump! And since we know the exact location of the sensors through GPS, and we know the speed of sound, we can triangulate the exact origin of that mortar. So now what we can do is swivel a camera at exactly where that mortar came from and do counterfire. Uh, we can also take a look at all the other points of origin and feed that into machine learning and come up with trends or even predict where the bad guys might fire next. Now finally, uh, 
Last question, just an open-ended question. When it comes to informatics on the battlefield, what would you say is something we can expect in the near future? And that's, that's easy. That's the topic that I said to, to come here for regarding Lavender. It's AI and ML targeting. Uh, this is where that whole Lavender article comes in, and I'll link to that specific article below. A lot of people asked me to review this article from 972 Magazine by a guy named Yuval Abraham. And I, I read the article, and I didn't think much of it because it uses anonymous sources. And if, if you're not going to go on the record, I mean, I have an anonymous source that says you're going to buy me lunch, right? Like, what's an anonymous source? So who knows if the article is true or you just had some dudes who want to make an adversary think that they have this capability. But here's what I know. A dead Palestinian mother who has collateral damage in a strike on an apartment building doesn't vote. But the mother of a dead IDF soldier will vote. So if you have a choice between sending a platoon of soldiers into a building to, to find Daddy El Baddy and take him out, or you have the choice of sending a JDAM and either taking out the room, the floor, or the building, the only real question we got here is how many civilian lives are worth the cost. And that's a calculation that you're going to do all the time. The only difference between traditional methods and using AI is that you're just setting a slider bar as to how many civilian casualties are accessible. It's really the only difference. So theoretically, the Lavender system is possible. And I know this not because I've worked on the Lavender system, but because we're working on these systems now. Both the U.S. and China are working on these AI-powered targeting systems. If the U.S. doesn't win the race for AI targeting, we are going to be at a severe disadvantage in the next LISCO or large-scale combat operation. The truth is we need these systems. Uh, I have a video coming out hopefully today, maybe this weekend, uh, on the plan to defeat China. I traveled to Camp Pendleton and I witnessed this joint multi-domain operation that did targeting at machine speed. And that's because in a LISCO environment, you can't do targeting at human speed. You'll get overwhelmed. And if you get overwhelmed, now the adversary is inside your ODA loop, and that's bad. So here's kind of the question. Is AI targeting necessarily bad? Look, we're always going to have civilians at legitimate targets. Not a lot we can do about that other than don't start a war. But I want to concentrate on the 10% targeting errors that the article claims the Lavender system had. Now, compare 10% errors on the Lavender system with Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and Hezbollah firing rockets into Israel. 100% of the rockets fired by Israel's adversaries are designed to fall on civilians. 100%. So, is the insurgency in Gaza, Lebanon, the West Bank, are they applying the same standards of targeting that Israel is applying right now? So if Lavender exists, probably wouldn't be a bad idea for Israel to give it to their adversaries, so their adversaries can actually improve their targeting. So if, if indiscriminate targeting has an error rate of 100%, and AI-based targeting has an error rate of 10%, does human-based targeting have a higher or lower rate of error than AI-based targeting? And I don't know the answer to that. Probably because error differs depending on intelligence you have, the weather, uh, the phase of the conflict that you're in. I know that we already make mistakes using humans doing the targeting. So it seems to me the only difference is the speed at which we're gonna make the mistakes. If you take a look at a country like China, if they're using AI or ML to perform predictive targeting and we're not, we are going to be at an extreme disadvantage. Because I guarantee you that China's tolerance for errors against civilians will be a lot greater than the coalition's tolerance for errors. So is it better to make fast mistakes or slow mistakes? I mean, look, if we make fast mistakes, civilians might be targeted and we're wasting weapon systems that are not going to get replaced and that's bad weapons have a dollar value it is an opportunity cost a bomb or a missile is kind of like a can of soda once you open it it's done you can't go put it back on the shelf 
You don't want to waste it since it might take months or years to get a new system. And there are a finite number of weapon systems in your magazine. I've often said you don't shoot weapons at targets for the lulls, but there will be weapons wasted on bad targets. So what amount of waste is acceptable? I mean, if we make mistakes slow, we could still lose those weapons anyway because the rounds might still be in the launchers when China hits them. I'd rather have those weapons out of the launch tube and 90% of them hitting good targets than losing 90% of them to Chinese AI guided strikes. And the good part of the machine learning program is that it learns and you can improve the algorithm over time. So to answer Tyler's question, what I see is predictive AI getting better at discriminating targets and an AI arms race with China that could decide the outcome of a war probably within the first few seconds. The only thing worse than having AI targeting might be not having AI targeting. Thank you for watching. Hey everyone, new Ryan Macbeth t-shirts and hoodies from Bunker Branding are available. I'm going to get the HIMARS shirt. What are you going to get, Donald? The Patriot shirt, because I'm a Patriot. It's the best shirt, the biggest shirt. Make 14 tangos great again. What are you going to get, Barack? Let me be clear. I'm going to get a drone sweet drone shirt. What about you, George? I'm going to get a try that missile shirt, because they're weapons of mass destruction. Oh, I'm going to get a landmine marker shirt because my presidency always blew up in my face. I'll tell you what I'm going to get. Ronald Reagan, but you're dead. I came back to tell you that no matter our politics, we're all Americans. And we should buy Ryan's hoodies and t-shirts because they pay for the stock footage and licenses that allow him to make awesome content. So come on down to Bunker Branding and buy a Ryan Beth t-shirt or I'll start the bombing in five minutes.